The environment is all that surrounds an organism. It includes all the external factors, both living and non-living things, that an organism interacts with to survive. Without the environment, life on Earth will not be possible. The environment consists of the atmosphere. The atmosphere includes the air and gaseous matters that surround an organism. The lithosphere. The lithosphere includes all the land on Earth, including the land under the sea and the mountains. Hydrosphere is the totality of the water body on Earth. The biosphere, this is the part of the Earth that connects every other part mentioned earlier. The biosphere is the part where all living things exist. However, there are so many issues that the environment is facing today. These environmental issues pose a great threat to organisms and human health. They range from pollution of various forms, that is air, land and water pollution. They may come in the form of improper waste management, open defecation, deforestation, which may sometimes lead to erosion and desertification. All these are a few of the plethora of issues facing the environment. Disposal of waste in drainages and waterways sometimes cause flowing waters to overflow with banks, causing flood and erosion. This is what Mr. Jacob, a former HOD and a lecturer in the Department of Agri Engineering, have to say on environmental issues. The present state of chemical fertilizer is not the type we used to use in those days. Those days, if you touch fertilizer, you will know that it's just your hand. You cannot use your hand to even touch fertilizer. You use polythene, like hand glue, and you can use it. You can use your hand to fetch. But now, you can even dump your hand inside. So as long as you after applying it for your crop, maybe major anything, after three or three, four weeks, you will not see any effect again because it's out of pressure. So there are a lot of things that we are facing in terms of land use. But if we look at it, there will be a way out. So when you are spraying chemical for your insecticide on the surface of your maybe uh, beans crop, because you want the beans to produce very well, it's also an adverse effect on the insects that are down. Especially when you now spray, and maybe after, 20, after about five, six hours, there is rain. Rain will wash it down into the soil and it will not kill the insects. So not allowing the insects inside, the microorganisms inside to do their, perform their work. Have you ever seen an ant here? Ant here. If you break ant here, don't you see small, small grasses? Those small, small grasses came from the surface into their own houses. And if you are a farmer and you have an ant here on your farm area and you have to break it, plant something by the side of the ant here, those areas, the crop there will do very fine because of this activity of this microorganism. What is flood? That is the first question we are going to ask you. Flood is a situation whereby we find ourselves in a problem. Rain falls and there is not enough space for it to pass. Abi, I for it to drain to the soil or for it to pass away. You know, it's a continuous something. Some of you that have been traveling, if you check the this season, that's in a roof, was not moderate because of flood, some kind of flood like that. You know, if we are able to plan our waterways, water channels very well, we are not supposed to have flood. Why do I I said, when we plan it very well, that's very important. Rain will have to pass, and I will continue to do my work. But now we now discover that the rain that is falling is frequent. The water channels are not enough to convey the water to the right destination. Farmers have already cultivated some areas, blocking some areas where water is supposed to pass, converting them to their own land, and then that leads to flooding. So, now that we are in this problem, how do we solve it? One, let our water channels be to specification. Like now, sometimes they say that they release water from River Niger. They don't. Why do they release water from River Niger? Because the water has stopped supposed to be used for another thing. If it's outside the country, they're supposed to be used for another thing. For irrigation or for dam. Thank God they say they are doing one dam in Shiroro and in Zimbabwe now. Whether it will be completed, I don't know what it is. So what we are supposed to do as an individual, as a body, 
anything that has to do with flood, where does the water come from? How do we now reduce the intensity of this? Can't this water be diverted to another direction for use? For instance, if you take that mineral road, eh, the water is just coming and in that particular place, water will not, and they now discover that the bridges that they make are small. So the water could not pass and it now aligns itself with the road, then cutting off the road. So the first thing we have to do is that if the water channels be in line with specification. Disposal of waste and drainages lead to erosion. These are roads destroyed by erosion as a result of disposal of waste on drainages and waterways. Stench from this waste also pollutes the air, making the environment inconvenient for inhabitation. Floods have, on several occasions, destroyed properties worth billions of naira. Found lands washed away and life lost. Let us listen to what Mr. Gabriel Uchi Obona, a student of the Federal Polytechnic Bida, Nanja State, have to see an improper waste disposal. Actually, as you can look at this, it's disgusting. Even at this point, I'm perceiving odor that is not good to the human health. Now, such things are not to be disposed here. It's affecting the flow of water at this point. So, if our our community can help us and those disposing these things can help us to find a means at which we can dispose it far from from where people are living you can see we have lodges we have students around we have family houses here so it's affecting us and, and it's not good to our health so we are we are we want them to work on it on how to dispose it and to dispose at a place at which it will be conducive for us the students and the and and, and those who are family around here Thank you. Air pollution is another major issue facing the environment. It is very common in urban and industrial areas. Industrial waste in the form of carbon monoxide are emitted into the atmosphere. This destroys the ozone layer, thereby increasing the ultraviolet ray of sun that hits the earth. Icebergs in the polar region are fast melting as the earth is getting hotter because of global warming. Water bodies are drying up and animals are dying as a result of this. Disposal of both domestic and industrial waste into water bodies make aquatic environment uninhabitable for marine life. This may also lead to scarcity of potable water for domestic use and the eventual consumption of this contaminated water may cause illness. Sound from airports and factories sited close to residential areas is another issue. The Earth for now is the only planet that supports the existence of life. Therefore, the environment should be cared for and taken care of to ensure a sane and healthy environment as we have only one Earth. Nigeria is currently rated among the urban areas with the lowest livability index in the world due to high rate of environmental deterioration. The estimation is that between 20% and 30% of the urban population in Nigeria only enjoy decent urban life. The environmental problems are mostly due to developmental processes and are local, regional, and global effects. These effects are viewed as consequences of human activities and are most often harmful on human beings. Livelihoods, animals and plants live friendly or transferred to posterity. The Nanja Delta in Nigeria has been described as one of the dirtiest places on the earth. A yearly huge amount of oil products are deposited here. A lot of farmers and fishermen live in this coastal territory and about 70% of the population rely on natural resources as their means of livelihood. The water pollution puts the populace health at risk. Research shows that the majority of the locals in oil producing areas suffer from chronic diseases all their lives. Another major problem of the urban environment area is the level of illiteracy of dwellers who migrated from the villages or small towns where educational opportunities are very low. Based on the high level of illiteracy, the knowledge or culture of their sanitation and urban environmental protection may be lacking being an occupation of rental status. 
There is a tendency to develop the attitude of nonchalant to environmental protection. The town and cities of developing countries like Nigeria are characterized by squalor, poverty, diseases, and much more in spite of the efforts of the city and other engineers. The major problem of the world is urbanization, where poverty, crime, environmental degradation, the generation of existing infrastructure, poor service delivery, and lack of access to land use and adequate shelter. The inability of Nigerian cities to cope with increasing environmental challenges has also shown manifestation in poor economic growth and development. The rapid growth of cities due to urbanization has led to the emergence of low income, informal settlement, both in the inner city and on the outskirts. This development accounted for the over depleted informal sector. The urban and rural population will be increasingly interdependent for their economic, social, and environmental well being in Nigeria. The number of factories operating in the Nigerian region put a lot of effort into oil extraction, but they do not pay enough attention to environmental issues in Nigeria. 